potatoes are an economically important crop that is being grown on an extensive basis in Africa, Asia, Latin America, the Caribbean islands, and the southern part of the United States. Currently, the crop is the seventh most important food crop in the world, being grown on more than 9 million hectares. It is because of this plant's immense importance to global agriculture that we thought this would be a great crop to experiment different propagation techniques with. David Wees, a professor at McGill University, often uses sweet potatoes during his experiments and has a lot of experience propagating them. Here's what he had to say about sweet potato production in Canada and his experience with propagation. It's a bit of a novelty crop for Canada. Almost all sweet potatoes we consume in Canada are actually imported from the United States. So there's only a small amount of local production and we're interested in finding ways of actually improving production locally. How do you normally propagate your sweet potatoes? Um, sweet potatoes are usually propagated by what are called slips, uh, which are unrooted cuttings. Um, and in most countries, they'll plant sweet potatoes in the field a month or two before they actually want to transplant them. Get the sweet potatoes to sprout, and then simply yank the sprouts off the, the tubers and transplant them to the field. We can't do that here, at least not outdoors, because again, we can't plant early. So what we've been doing is propagating them indoors in the greenhouse by again sprouting roots and then taking the sprouts and rooting them as rooted cuttings in cell packs or plug trays or other containers like that. And then once they're rooted, then we transplant them out to the field. Have you experimented with any other kinds of propagation or is that really... No, we've only used the, the rooted cuttings or occasionally we've actually ordered slips, but those are the only methods we've used. I know it's possible to propagate them from uh, by actually planting tuberous roots, um, and in some countries they do that, I think because it's just a question of convenience. Um, the problem with that is you often end up with a lot of crooked sweet potatoes later on, so the quality isn't quite as good as when you transplant or you plant from uh, cuttings. Hey guys, we're at the beginning of the semester and we will start our marvelous sweet potato project. What we're going to do is that we're going to test the, our sp sweet potato propagation between bottom 8 and without bottom 8. And what we're going to do is that we're going to propagate these sweet potatoes by tuberous cutting and further in the semester we're going to propagate them by slip cutting. So, here we go. The four cultivars that we will be using in our experiment are Burgundy, Orleans, Bellevue, and Georgia Jet. You'll notice that we have different amounts of each cultivar, but we must keep in mind that one of the principal goals of our experiment is not only to test the differences between bottom heat and not using bottom heat, but also to create propagative materials to supply the Hort Center with. So before we could actually begin the experiment and plant the tubers, uh, the literature indicated that we would want to expose the tubers to uh, heat treatment, so temperatures of about 40 to 44 degrees, in order to break apical dominance, as well as kill nematodes and fungal diseases. So ideally we would have some kind of oven that we could just stick these sweet potato tubers in uh, that would do this for us. But unfortunately, through inquiring with the facilities we have, there was no ovens like this available. But, through creative thinking, we spoke to Guy Rimmer, uh, the guy in charge of most of the greenhouses here, uh, and we discovered that the mechanical room under the research greenhouse uh, tends to get quite warm. In fact, according to him, it gets to approximately 40 degrees Celsius. So, if you'll follow me, you can see our experimental setup for our heat treatment. Come along! So here you'll see our four cultivars set up. So we have our Georgia Jet, Orleans, we have Bellevue, and Burgundy. In the first part of the experiment, we propagated the sweet potatoes by tuberous cuttings. We disinfected our knives, cut the tubers down the center, and planted these in our potting mixture. Our first soil mixture was a combination of turface, peat moss, and perlite, with numerous fertilizers including calcium nitrate, dolomite, hydrated lime, potassium nitrate, potassium sulfate, superphosphate, and a micronutrient mix. 
While the mix worked very well for us, for subsequent planting we used a generic G10 potting mix due to time constraints. We followed up by fertilizing using 20-20-20. Throughout the course of the experiment, we took care to maintain our plants. We watered and fertilized them regularly, and we kept an eye out for pests and diseases. In this photo, you can see the fly trap, which we used to monitor for white flies. We were lucky enough not to encounter this devastating sweet potato pest. We propagated the sweet potatoes by stem cuttings twice during the course of our experiment. In this video, you can see the technique that was used. Clean razor blades were used to make two node stem cuttings. The, the cut was made below a leaf node. A slanted cut was made on the bottom to indicate polarity. These cuttings were then planted in the potting mixture. The second time we did our stem cuttings, we benefited from a lot of extra hands from our classmates to help with the workload. Hey guys, it's Jerome again, and I must explain to you why we decided to move our little babies to Butterbeet. What happened during the semester is that some cultivars, especially Burgundy, were not that great on without Butterbeet. So we decided to move it just to speed up a bit the process to have good plants for the art center. So after four weeks, we moved all the plants that were not on bottom eight on bottom eight. These were the final amounts of cuttings obtained from our experiment. Orleans provided the highest total amount of slips. Burgundy produced the lowest amount of slips. Georgia Jet was the quickest to grow, and it should be noted that all of the slips produced of this cultivar came from the same single tuberous root. In the end, we have seen that sweet potatoes are an incredibly vigorous plant, growing rapidly when the correct conditions are set. However, because this plant originates from warmer climates, the use of bottom heat was imperative to growing successful slips during our experiment. But, when all is said and done, we must remind ourselves of the number one reason why we grow sweet potatoes. Why do you grow sweet potatoes? Why do you like them? Um, well, personally, I like sweet potatoes because they're really tasty. <laughs>